This is part one of my multi-part series on understanding analog tape machines and alignment. The goal of this course is to give you a basic understanding of how an analog tape recorder works and to teach you to calibrate and set up a professional multi-track recorder in your studio. Play the 10 kilohertz tone from the test tape. Adjust azimuth for the highest level at 10 kilohertz. Aligning a tape machine can seem confusing, but it's not difficult. This is caused by the fact that you're adjusting electronic controls to change magnetic parameters. This is why I start the course with basic magnetic theory. This will help you understand dynamic range, signal to noise ratio, and bias. From there I move on to machine controls and functions. This will give you an overview on how to operate a multi-track machine. I'll finish with step-by-step -step alignment instructions. Now I'll be aligning with the Studer 827, but I explain the alignment controls in general terms so you should be able to apply this course to any tape machine. I'm going to start with some very basic magnetic theory. Magnets have two poles, north and south. Alike poles repel, opposite poles attract. Both poles attract ferrous metals like iron or steel. Heads in a tape recorder aren't this type of fixed magnet, they're electromagnets. When an electric current flows through a wire, a magnetic field is generated. The magnetic field generated in a single wire is quite small. If we want a stronger magnetic field, we can increase the voltage or add more wires closely spaced together. The most efficient way to do this is to wrap a long wire into a tightly spaced coil creating the equivalent of many small magnets. If we wrap the coil around a ferrous metal like this nail, the metal becomes a strong magnet as long as the current is flowing. Something else should be noted. If a ferrous metal like iron is exposed to a strong magnetic field, the piece of metal will become partially, permanently magnetized. The reverse is also true. If a wire is moving through or in the presence of a changing magnetic field, a voltage will be produced in that wire. A single wire passing through a magnetic field will only generate a small voltage. If we want a stronger signal, we can wind the wire into a coil and move that coil through the magnetic field, which will increase the voltage. A ribbon microphone is the equivalent of a piece of wire suspended in a magnetic field. When we speak into a microphone, our vocal cords vibrate, pushing and pulling the air. This positive and negative air pressure causes the metal ribbon in the microphone to vibrate, moving it back and forth in the magnetic field. This generates a voltage that fluctuates the same as the air pressure. The voltage is so small coming from the microphone, we first need to pass it through a mic preamplifier to boost the signal, then we'll send it to the tape machine. Inside the tape recorder, the audio signal first passes through the input level control, then moves on to the record electronics. There the level is adjusted and high frequencies are equalized. This equalization is to flatten the response of the machine or correct for inaccuracies in the recording process. The audio signal then travels to the record head. The problem is the audio signal alone isn't consistently powerful enough to create a strong magnetic field in the record head. So we need another signal to help. This signal is called bias. To help you visualize the bias signal, I'm going to insert a piece of test equipment called an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope will allow you to actually see the electronic signals. Bias is a super high frequency, high voltage signal. While not being audible on playback, it will ensure that there is a consistently strong magnetic field in the record head. The bias signal and the audio are now mixed together. This composite signal is then sent to the record head. Inside the record head is a coil of wire per track. This coil is wrapped around a U-shaped piece of metal that forms the record head. 
the electric current flowing through the coil of wire generates a magnetic field. In this case, the electric current is your audio and bias signal. The magnetic field generated in the coil makes the metal head a strong electromagnet. As the tape moves past the record head, tiny particles of metal coating the surface of the tape become magnetized. The magnetic field fluctuates to match your incoming audio signal. You now have a magnetic recording of your original sound. Playing back audio is almost identical to recording, but the process is reversed. Inside the reproduce or playhead is again a coil of wire wrapped around a U-shaped piece of metal. As the magnetized oxide particles, which is your recording, move past the gap in the playhead, the head conducts this magnetic field. This fluctuating magnetic field generates a voltage in the coil of wire. Reproduce heads are designed to only pass the audio signal and not the bias. The signal travels from the playhead to the reproduce electronics. There, the level is boosted and can be adjusted. As well, there's high frequency and low frequency equalization to make the machine as accurate as possible. After the reproduce electronics, the signal passes through the output level control, which matches the machine's output level to your recording console. Dynamic range is the ratio between the loudest and quietest sound that can be recorded. The lowest sound is determined by the noise inherent in analog tape. This is caused by the tiny oxide particles moving past the reproduce head. The strongest signal that can be recorded on magnetic tape is determined by magnetic saturation of the tape. Saturation is when the metal particles become completely magnetized. At this level, no matter how much additional magnetic energy you apply to the tape, your recording will not get any stronger. This results in distortion. Current magnetic theory is that every substance, in this case our metal oxide particles, contain domains, or groups of molecules, that act like magnets. The domains are randomly arranged, so most of their magnetic energy cancels. But if the metal is brought within a strong magnetic field, like our record head, the domains start to become aligned, and the metal becomes magnetized. If the metal is exposed to a strong magnetic field, all the domains become aligned and the metal becomes saturated. Increasing the strength of the magnetic field will have no effect. In the recording world, saturation in small degrees can be quite pleasing and sounds similar to compression, but when excessive, it's just distortion. So the upper and lower limit of our magnetic recording, our noise or random magnetic energy on the low end, and saturation or distortion on the upper limit, how do we know magnetically what level we are recording? We need a reference, and this reference is our test tape. That's the end of part one. In part two, I will go over test tapes. If you like this pro audio content and you want to see more, please hit like and subscribe. It makes a difference.